Hi, I'm Dennis Gage, and welcome to my classic car. Well, this week we're in Fresno, California for the Remember When Classic Car and Airplane Show. This is such a cool event, and it's held at the Chandler Executive Terminal here. This thing was built back in the 30s by the WPA, Art Deco personified. I mean, this is gonna be a lot of fun. Way cool cars, way cool planes. Let's check this stuff out. Check this out, 2001. I've been doing this a while. Hi, Boy, Dennis. how you doing? Good, how you doing? I'm doing great. Boy, is this a cool show. It's turned out really well. We're real pleased with it. Well, you know, it's kind of a rare treat to combine uh, planes with the cars, and, and we're at such a cool venue. Here are the, what is it, it's the Chandler? This is Chandler Executive Airport. It was Fresno's main airport before World War II. Uh -huh. And um, uh, we had uh, tri-motors landing here and picking up people and DC-3s. And it is, uh, on my understanding, it's the last existing WPA built terminal uh -huh. in the United States. And of course, you've seen the terminal. Oh. It's a beautiful Art Deco design and, and just a gorgeous little terminal. It right? really is. I mean, it, talk about a step back in time. I walked in and it's so perfectly restored. Uh, I, just, I just thought it was just unbelievable. But yeah. you're putting on a great show and Fresno's a bit of a hotbed for the, the hobby anyway. It's got a deep history and automobiles and racing, et cetera, so. So, so how did you, you know, why did you combine this show? What, what's the genesis? This is of what, the fifth year for the show? This is the fifth year. And of course it takes, you know, quite a few people coming in to make a show sure. successful. And we're trying to attract um, people that are uh, aviation folks and car buffs so uh -huh. we can get the biggest crowd that we possibly can. This year we have over 200 cars yeah. here. Nice turnout. And a great turnout and uh, they really complement each other and so it's it's just a, a great show. Well, it's, it's, it's been a lot of fun. I've seen some great cars, I've seen some great planes and I don't know as much about them. I'd like you to explain something. Let's, let's go check a few. Sure, out. you bet. All right. Well, Lauren, uh, this is pretty cool. And I, at first, I wasn't sure what it was. I thought it was, you know, a modded Mustang. But yeah. it's a very specially modded Mustang. This is a 66, but it is, it is a prototype, and it's what, one of three built? Yeah, uh, it was done by uh, Bud Anderson, and he was also known as the cat from AMT. He worked for Ford on the Ford Caravan program. Uh -huh. He also worked on the GT40 program. And That's what the front end looks like, actually. But this isn't the original front end. The other one, which I have at home, is a J-Hood, and that came from the GT40 program, which is an inverted chute that goes down oh, sure, behind. Right. And the air goes in, and it, up, it eliminates the uplift on the engine, uh, the front end, and it pulls the heat out of the front of the car. Where was this built? It was back in Royal Oak, Michigan. It was, okay. Yeah, there was uh -huh. sterling silver plaques on the other front end that say Royal Oak, Michigan, American Grand Touring Mustang. Uh -huh. But officially that's what they're called is the American Grand Touring Mustangs by Bud Anderson. Wow. Hearst wheels? George Hearst was a very close personal friend of Bud's. He put Hearst wheels on the car and the very first Hearst Competition Plus shifter in it. The engine, it's a K car but this engine came from the GT40 program also. Is it Mustang from here back? Is this all steel, the door steel? Yes, this is all steel in here. So this area. was pretty much a 66 fastback until uh -huh. they took the front end off and did some stuff in the back. But it, like here, yeah. it, it looks like a 66 Mustang. Yeah. How about correct. those column gauges? Okay, that's the rally pack and it's an eight grand rally pack. Uh, obviously you needed that to monitor the RPMs on the engine because it's really high strung. The rear, is this fiberglass too? Yes, this is all Bud Anderson's own personal design. This is the car the spoiler was introduced on in the Detroit Free Press, October 22nd, 1966. On the front page of that paper, meet the spoiler. So this is the car the spoiler was introduced on to the public. What's hiding behind these slots here? I mean, are those, those aren't the, Mustang taillights. Yes, they are. they are. They're actually original Mustang taillights. This, the lenses are shaved down to clear the back end, ah. and the grills are gone, and it's in but the rolled back in, uh -huh. the, the pan and the French license plate, these were all his designs, and it was supposed to come yeah. out off the assembly line. But it didn't. It didn't, <laughs> uh, for other reasons. Well now, you got. You say you've got the a Cobra engine under, let's go look at that. So it is a factory K car, but the engine was swapped out when Bud was working on the GT40 program. It's a 289, it runs far differently than it looks. Is that a solid lifter car? Yes. Then Jack had uh, an experimental cam put in it that came from a friend of his that worked at the uh, engineering department at Ford. It's got the GT40 heads on it. Yeah, so that is definitely 
a unique car. A 1966 Mustang, but with the Bud Anderson front end treatment. What did they call it? Did they call it the a, American Grand The Tour American Grand Touring Mustangs Mustang. by Bud Anderson, the cat Very from cool. AMT. Thanks for bringing it out. That's yeah, awesome, man. You're welcome. Well, Art, uh, you know, there's a lot I like about this 29 Roadster pickup. <laughs> there really is. Now, you built this thing. Pretty much, pretty yes, much uh -huh, yeah. yeah. It was the engine that, that sucked me into this, well, this vehicle. Uh, right. You know, I'd heard of the Riley overhead Correct. conversions, uh -huh, yeah. but they're kind of a two-pod thing, Correct. right? Correct, uh -huh. yeah, I have one of those. Of course you do. <laughs> <laughs> but I'd never heard of the Miller. It was the same, obviously the yeah. same period? or Same period, yes, uh-huh. And then it became Krager. Oh, is that right? Yes, uh-huh, okay. yeah. And then yeah. how about the, the intake? I mean, what's that? It's a, a Anson ma intake manifold with a Stormberg 97 carburetor. This engine just looks really uh -huh. great. Uh -huh. Yeah. <laughs> and and how about the, the headers? I mean, is that, that something you can buy now, too? You can buy that also. Wow. And, yeah. and I mean, the truck in general looks good. I like the wheels. The wheels look awfully big for this thing. They're uh, Kelsey Hayes 16-inch uh -huh. wheels uh -huh. with uh, 750 Firestones in the rear, and they're 550 Firestones in front. So, you, so they're the same size wheels, just big and little tires. Correct. Because uh -huh. yeah. <laughs> those back ones yeah. look pretty darn beefy. Yeah. And, and, and those tires are from that era. Now, I like the color, too. This, this uh, what is it? It's, uh, it's called Jade Green. And it's, it's a, a Ford color, right? Ford color. And are you all steel, even your fenders? A everything's steel on this vehicle. Man. Yeah. And, and that all came complete? It, Correct. Wow. Mm -hmm. And your gauge cluster is, is pretty much 29 uh, Correct. model? Correct, yeah. yeah. And a few modifications on it, but it's, yeah, it's a 29. I moved the starter switch in the in the middle uh -huh. where there would normally be a little light, you know. So there's a lot of little things like that we had to remodify. So you did all that stuff, huh? Correct, yes. Yeah, uh -huh. you, got some, you got some skills. <laughs> you got some skills. Yeah. <laughs> like the bed too, and what's the what's the chrome plate there? Uh, the rear spring is to give it clearance. Where oh, the, okay. the frame goes. Okay, yeah. yeah. She's also really straight. You must have done some work to the gentleman that painted it, he did a fantastic job on the on the body work. Well I love this truck. Nineteen twenty nine Model A Roadster pickup with just a great Period, speed mod engine. Uh -huh. I love it. Thanks for bringing okay. it out, Art. Thank you. Way Thank cool. You. Well, Sharon, uh, this, is a, this is a 56 Austin Healey 104, yes. right? Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. That designation, that 100 is because that car was capable of? Doing 100 miles an hour. 100? You had a button to push it in overdrive, and that kicked it up there. Boom. Mm -hmm. And in 56, 100 miles an hour for a car this size was That's pretty right. darn fast. It's called a big Healy. You guys, you and your husband, have had this car for a long, long time. We've been married 55 years. He yeah. proposed to me in this car. He, he proposed to you in this car. He got right out of <laughs> after high school. You know, this is not really a family car. Oh, but they fit in. No way. One, one behind that seat, one on the hump, one behind that seat, one in the toaster in my life. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> Seriously, seven years, this was a family car. I like the flares. Are those fiberglass? No, those are steel. And the cowling, front to back, is aluminum. Aluminum down the middle. One of the things I always liked about these, not all 100s had this, did they? This no. windshield? They only had the 53 through 56 Austin Healey's had the racing. Unscrew this knob, a little nipple fits in here, right. and then it became fixed. And then otherwise you dropped her down and you were Drop like sleek and this is streamlined. Racing mode. But man, what you've done with the interior is really stunning. I mean, well, it looks you. like carbon fiber, is it? Yeah, it is. It really is? It really is. And I mean, this just looks like a little screamer. These aren't the original seat frames. Yes, they are. They are, really? Wow. Yep. And we even had just put a new blo block in here, but no, it's still the wood. Unbelievable. The wood, see over here? It's still yes, the wood Yes, I do, I do. It. The only thing we changed was the old, we had the steering wheel, but it's so thin yeah. and big around it. Just yeah. doesn't fit. <laughs> and then, you know, anymore, you kind of, this is what you're used to yeah, grabbing onto. It's, it's much easier. You obviously added these and they. For safety. The real deal, they go all the way and down the there, tie in. Four the points, front. yes. They go right through. Oh, yes, they do. Yes. Wow. And we'll fuel cell and then, there. Then Wait. we uh, put a fuel cell in for safety because it was well known in the 50s and 60s when they were racers that you get rear ended, you and blow up. Woof. Yeah, that's, boy, I mean, you've just done such a great job. And. <laughs> I just, I gotta see what you got under the, oh. under the hood now. Let's have a look under there, Sharon. Oh, oh, that's, that's nice. So that's really nice. <laughs> what are we looking at? You're looking at a Boss 302 racing engine, Stroker 363, 500 horsepower. My goodness. This is a 2,300 pound car. You oh. don't go around corners very fast. No, man. I mean, I've certainly seen 289s put them in and stuff like that, but they this. They drop right in. Yeah, yeah, but this is nice workmanship all around. Yeah, we're yeah. very fortunate. <laughs> well, it's awesome. A 1956 Austin Healey 104 Sporting 
302 punched out Ford engine. I just love it. Sharon, thanks for bringing this Thank baby out. Thank you so much. It was so, so nice cool. to meet you. Well, Steve, it's a classic car and airplane show, so I figured we should do an airplane. Sounds great. <laughs> and I think you've got one of the coolest little planes here. This is a classic. This is a Piper Cub. I mean, when I was growing up, like when you thought of a little plane, you thought of the Piper Cub. When you built a model, you built the Piper Cub. If you had an RC plane, it was probably a Piper Cub. And this is like a what, a 47? This is a 1947 J3C 65 horse, upgraded to a 90 horse, so we can actually travel in it. Burns a little bit more fuel, so we added some fuel tanks in the wings. Yeah. Uh, so we'd have a range and put disc brakes, and that's about it, besides the shiny paint. Is that a four cylinder? It's a, a, it's a, a four cylinder, engine? opposed engine, and uh, it's a non electrical engine. It doesn't have a starter, it has two mags. And so, I mean, is this a... It's a hand propper. Th no yeah. contact. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. I always wanted to do that. <laughs> did you do most of the restoration? Yes, I did it all. And I uh, had a, a nice little hanger and I built a temporary paint booth and I wanted to cover a real one with fabric. So, so that is, so this is a fabric covered plane, this which is, is what, that's the way they came, right? Yes, it is. Yes, now, it is. It was originally a, it was a cotton or something, right? It was originally cotton and the cotton only lasted about five years. And then you and, had to do it again? and you had to do it again. But the new stuff is in the 60s, they started making out polyester. Were they all this yes, color? Yes, they were this color. This airplane does not have a radial system. So I have to look around, make sure people see me. So they made them yellow. This airplane trained a lot of pilots. And what's so cool about these shows is a lot of World War II guys that come up, older guys will come up and say, hey, I got my license in one of these, you know, when back in blah, 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 I, yep. I flew one of these and it's like, wow, you got to fly it when it was brand new. I love how these open up too. You know, right? that's what I love about the Cub. Uh, it doesn't feel like, you know, you're boxed in when you're flying it. Uh, so you can fly it this way and that's how I fly it in the summer. You can fly it wide open like that? You can fly it wide open. You can fly it with just the door open. And really simple controls. Like you say, there's no electric and everything's like, it's, it's crank and cable, isn't it? Exactly. You really feel the airplane when you're flying it. It feels like it has power steering, you know, because the stick is just so easy. Is a tail dragger tougher? It is. The main thing with a tail dragger is keeping the back back there. Don't ground loop it on the runway. And so when you think you got it made, that's when you don't. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, like that 15 <laughs> miles an hour to zero is when you can get in trouble. That, uh huh. But very fun airplane to fly. And it does get a lot, lot of attention. People always want to look at the little yellow airplane. This is so cool. A 1947. Piper yes. Cub with a whole bunch of letters and numbers after that, but I remember it as a 47 Piper Cub. Yep. Steve, yep. beautiful restoration. Thank Thanks you so for much. bringing it out, man. Such that a is pleasure. So cool. Thank you so much. Well, Jim, you know, <laughs> this this car caught my eye, and at first, I kind of, it took me a long time. I wasn't quite sure what it was. This is actually a, a 1970 Galaxy. Correct, yes. XL, XL, although it says Galaxy nowhere, and it never did? Not that I'm aware of. I've looked in magazines and stuff, and I did not see it anywhere where there'd be badges on the side or on the trunk lid. What's the deal with the GTs? It has the GT racing mirrors on it. Okay. Um, some other options, and no, they didn't make a GT at the time. But it looks but good. But it looks good it on looks their really <laughs> and, and then the color scheme is like, oh, is this a resto mod or something? This was the original paint scheme. Right, that is correct. Out of 850,000 galaxies in 1970, they made 160 uh, painted this color. By now, Ford has started to, to, to sprout this almost Pontiac-like beak in right. front. And you've got the hideaway headlights. Those are uh, vacuum controls. That's correct. Do they yeah. work? They work. The original top? I mean, mm -hmm. that thing looks just great. It's the original top one. And, glass and back window. Glass back window, too. Yep. Wow. Now, how about the wheels? Are those customs, or was that? Did, could you get those from They Ford? were offered from Ford. They're Magnum 500s. Boy, is it? Interesting, because it's a car you just oh, don't yeah. see. But, you know, nice original interior from, from 1970. That's a sporty looking dash. And that was a new styling for the time. Fancy steering wheel too, it's padded? Yes, sir. it is padded. And then you're, you're rocking a factory eight track? Eight track. Ah, it's clearly Ford and it says XL and you got to figure that's probably a Galaxy, but you would think it would say Galaxy. You think somewhere you would think they so. would put it. Just but it because. doesn't say it anywhere. Yeah. Right. Well, let's, uh, let's go have a look at the engine. All right, great. Oh, oh, wow. It's a it's a two-barrel? It is a two-barrel, 392 barrel. Oh, it looks like you drive this occasionally, but that's in pretty nice shape. I do. I drive it uh, maybe once every two weeks. Uh-huh. 1970 Ford Galaxy XL, although it doesn't say Galaxy, mm -hmm. 
convertible in a paint scheme that was 160 out of 850,000. That's pretty darn rare. Thank Jim, you. thanks for bringing it out, man. Thank you, Mr. Gage. Cool right, car. Take care. Cool car. Oh, man. The Remember When Classic Car and Airplane Show here in Fresno has been an absolute blast. I'm telling you, that terminal alone is worth the trip. Check it out. Hi.